happy September, you guys. <laughs> I have been doing a lot of cleaning over here in my raised beds. Uh, September is here, finally. This is the weekend of Labor Day, happy Labor Day. We don't have any commitments this weekend, so I am just going to be doing a lot of gardening here as much as I can do. My husband has also a couple of projects that he's going to need my help with, so I am hurrying up this morning, coming over here before these places before this location is in full sun and uh, it's going to be really hot again. We're starting those days of 95 plus degrees. So um, things are water. Yesterday I kind of came here and watered everything a little bit extra just in case I can or for some reason I'm busy um, during the next couple of days. But I do have a lot of irrigation already installed in most of my raised beds and a lot of my things. I only have like a couple containers that I don't have irrigation for. Everything else is really taken care of. I'm not worried about the watering part. That's the beauty of irrigation. This guy right here is a volunteer. This is a chocolate. This is a chocolate chocolate something sunflower look at this beauty and it sort of started here on the on the path and i mean that's okay uh the birds love this but what i'm going to be doing today is i really want to harvest a bunch of flowers that i have that they're beautiful and i want to dry them inside i haven't really done that much over the years but this year I already have a few things going inside. I am also going to harvest a bunch of my herbs like oregano and thyme again because um, they're just bursting out of their green stock. And it's funny because I show you in one of my last videos uh, that I went crazy just cutting all of the growth all the way almost to the roots to ground level to where they are in the green stack and it's however many weeks already after that and it's full already so it's time for me to dry those i have been uh, drying them inside i'm going to show you that hopefully here at the, at the towards the end of the video lots to do lots to do how gorgeous is this this is a breakout this is beautiful, beautiful. But also, this one is color spectacle. I mean, this one is just freaking gorgeous. I don't know if they'll actually dry like this. Maybe they'll get like really wrinkly, but I mean, I don't know, we'll see. I want to show you how big, how tall really my, oh, my dahlias have gotten in the raised beds. Uh, for reference, the soil that I have in my raised beds, it's like really nice soil. At the beginning of the spring, I got a bunch of compost and fresh soil for raised uh, bed mix and I loaded it with that. So it's, it's really rich in nutrients. And I think that the dahlias really, really love that. Actually, everything that I put here really, really striving. But these dahlias, the color spectacle ones that I have right here, I have, I think I have, I have four dahlias on this side and I have four dahlias over here. They're all different varieties. But the one that has been really, really flourishing and thriving here is my color spectacle one. And Hopefully you can see that from the video. This guy right here. I mean, my raised beds are probably about six inches from, from the ground level. And this guy is, I mean, is at least, is getting close to eight feet tall. And it's, gosh, the dahlias that I get from, from this, this plant. You can see the difference in sizes. This is the same dahlia, same plant. I just harvest this too. This one is already uh, a little bit, I don't know, past, their, past its prime. You can see here on the back how it's, um, it's, it's already past their prime. I don't think this one is going to dry well versus this one, but I'm still gonna dry it and we'll see what I get from it. Like I said, I haven't um, really done much drying before with with flowers, so we'll see how this one's still. But this one, color is spectacle. I can't remember if I got it at Home Depot or at Lowe's. It was kinda um, later in the spring and I only had like uh, three or four weeks to get them started indoors, but they were on sale. I got them. 
actually it was Home Depot. They came in like a fancier uh, packaging from the regular dahlias and I'm glad that I got this one because this one is definitely one that I'm going to um, keep on going. So hopefully the tubers multiplied because I'm gonna be saving this. I'm also going to get a, only a couple of these blooms because these are really lovely, lovely blooms from these hydrangeas. These are beautiful. Japanica rose. They're already past their prime, but I think they're going to try just amazing. Okay, so these are all the flowers that I have that I want to try to dry for maybe doing something, some sort of craft this winter. And from what I have been um, checking from from my research that I did is that people that do this for, you know, selling their flowers or dry flowers, they really treat the flowers first before they just hang them. They don't just start hanging them right away. And what I'm going to do is that I am going to let these soak all this water here in this uh, vase for 24 hours so they can really uh, drink all of the water that they need. And then I'm going to make a single individual bunches of the same flowers so that I can hang them inside in a cool, somewhat dark place. But look at all that color. Isn't that amazing? That is like a bouquet right there. Look at that. If you have experience drying flowers, I will offer you to leave me uh, some sort of, uh, I don't know, advice or uh, something to take notice. I, like I said, I don't really dry cut flowers that much. I maybe do a uh, hydrant, yes, but those I just add a little bit of water, put it in a base and then let them be and they dry beautifully. I really don't have any trouble drying hydrangeas, but I do wanna check how like these gorgeous dahlias dry or how like, the, uh, I know the straw flowers are also going to dry beautifully, but I'm excited to see how these turn out to be here in a couple of months. And hopefully I can show you how or what I am doing this winter. Maybe a wreath? I don't know. I don't even know if I'll have enough for a wreath here. What do you think? This is pretty much how I'm going to be making like the little bunches. Okay. 
Okay, so I do have a couple of things here that are going to help me with drying these herbs, especially this oregano. Uh, I just have some string, just whatever string you have available that you can use. Uh, the type of string really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to leave this outside, out into the weather. So I think, I don't know honestly which one this is. This may, may be cotton from Hobby Lobby. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I kind of harvested my oregano and I put him here in this tray uh, and I'm going to be getting like small bunches like this and I am going to be tightening I'm going to be making sort of like a banner you'll see that in a minute and what I um, have been doing before doing this is that I rinse Now, rinsing the herbs before I start to dry them may not be something that a lot of people do. It's just something that you probably can skip, but I just like to, you know, if there is something that it's there, like dust or I don't know, something else. And I just like to, to rinse that off because I already know where I'm going to be hanging these guys. I am going to make a, a couple of long strings. I don't know, about four feet long or so and i am just going to start getting a few bunches together really nothing to it i just want to make sure that these guys are tight because once they start drying they're going to start getting uh, smaller and i'm going to keep on adding to this uh, like banner of herbs So right here, I have a banner of just four little bunches. And these are basically going to be hanging inside. And I'll show you how that's going to be in a minute. Now, because these are soaking wet right now, I am just going to leave them here for the rest of the day so they can dry a little bit before I move them inside. This is normally how I handle drying my herbs inside. Let me show you some of the dry herbs that are already ready to be moved to a different spot that I have going inside. This room, which is my seed starting room at the beginning of the spring. Right now it's just acting as a storage corner really for things that need a place during the summer and during the fall. But pretty soon here in the spring, they're going to be full of, of seeds, of seedlings, of things that need to be started indoors and all of that stuff. But right now this is the best spot that I have inside in a cool, somewhat darker place and i say somewhat darker because i can just close all of the windows in this room and it gets pretty it doesn't get super dark but it's the darkest in my house this is the first set of oregano that i studied and as you can tell it is pretty dry it is very, very dry. I started these bunches just like I show you. And these guys have been here for at least, at least six weeks and they are definitely crunchy. What I need to do now is to separate the branches from the leaves and keep those leaves for cooking with it during the winter amazing. I have some thyme, 
oregano, this is amaranth. I am not going to be cooking with this, this is just for, um, for some sort of craft. This right here is yerba buena, which is Mexican mint. And the thing about doing this, what I notice, oh, it smells so good. They retain all of the flavor, their aroma, just so, so good. While I have you here, let me show you some of the flowers. This right here is Celosia. It is completely, completely dry. And look at the color, you guys. That is beautiful. Here is more Celosia. This is the Pampas, Pampas mix, Pampas Plum mix, something like that. Look at that. I think that if you are looking to dry, to grow flowers for, for drying, I mean, look at that color. These are completely, completely dry. And look at their beautiful, beautiful color. This right here is calendula. This is the Playtime Mix Calendula. Look how beautiful. Know how close I can get. What I'm loving is the color retention of some of this. Now, some of this don't necessarily hold the color, but I don't mind that color that they have right now. This right here was, this right here is a hydrangea. I think this is the smooth invincible hydrangea. At the time, it was a nice uh, pink, but look at that. Look at that color. These right here are my Cranberry Cosmos. They look a little purple, but these are the red Cranberry Cosmos. And I mean, look at that color. And of course, this is the red spike Amaranth. I am surprised that the amaranth didn't quite hold the beautiful burgundy color. It is now more of a more of a I don't know like a dark dark orange. It's not a bad color. I just was hoping that like the celosia, it will hold the it will hold the, the true color. But I mean it's beautiful. Beautiful. Now, a few of these are not quite necessary, necessarily looking amazing. This is some of my Snapdragons. They're completely dry, but they look like they could still be green. Some of the blooms are holding the pink color that they have, but if you're looking at it from like far away, it almost look like they're still wet and, and not quite dry. But I mean, these are completely, completely dry. I don't know. You decide for yourself. One thing for sure is that trying to dry hydrangeas hanging, hanging down like this is not necessarily my, my favorite because I have dry hydrangeas before in, in a vase with just like a little bit of water and they dry quite quite better than this like these like do not look like hydrangeas but on another note they don't look like they are hydra hydrangeas from far away so i mean this will not be bad in a in a craft in a dry flower craft and you know it will give you a nice nice accent this is Pervina Bonariensis. It didn't really hold much color at all. It has a little bit of a hint of a blue, of a dark blue, but you can't really tell. But I mean, I wouldn't mind this if you're doing some sort of decoration. This is actually really cool just to have floating around. So all together, so far, the flowers that I have been drying they're not looking too bad as far as color goes. Honestly, I don't mind the shape. I, I feel like for me drying the flowers, I don't mind 
how wrinkly they get as far as they hold some sort of color. And I mean, all of this, look at that. It's just beautiful. So if you're not drying flowers and you have plenty of blooms right now in your garden, I will definitely encourage you to try it. This is beautiful, beautiful. What do you think? This is where I am going to bring all of my bunches of oregano that I just made. But I'm going to wait a few hours until, like I said, they are a little bit drier outside from all the spraying that I did. And that's about it for this video. I hope that you guys got inspired. If you guys are drying your own flowers, let me know. Give me some tips and all that good stuff. Thank you for being here, you guys. And until the next time.